Welcome to Myrtle's Rant. You know, as I sit around in our Alchemy Studio, which is our office here at the Jazz Farm, and I listen to the Fields of Green for All team speaking to each other, and then somebody blurts out if there's some news, or have you seen this, or, and, and I listen to these conversations going backwards and forwards, and I often think afterwards, oh, I wish I'd have caught that on, on film, you know? Or if I uh, am in an interview and I tend to go off about things that I am passionate about, and then the interviewer cuts me short and puts me in another direction, then I often think, that there's so much more that I could have said because this cannabis world of ours is so incredibly dense and there are so many nuances, particularly now as today, spring day 2022, happy spring everybody, I thought that I would do the first edition of Myrtle's Rat. Now, it's been going around in my head for a little while and I've been thinking how to approach it. Now, being a bit of a list maker myself, and I like to have everything quite organized, uh, I could have started writing a script. But I know from the day that Jules and I used to do just dozens and dozens and dozens of presentations every year, we had to script those presentations because there was two of us on the stage. And uh, we had to know what the other one was saying so that we could pick it up. And it was a bit like a dance. So we were locked into that whole thing of having a script. So I decided consciously all day today when I thought of something that I needed to say, um, I especially didn't write it down because I really want Myrtle's rant to be coming from the heart. And uh, just things that, that come up in my mind because this cannabis plant of ours, this amazing, amazing plant, which is my, my first favorite plant, my second favorite plant is the coffee plant. Um, it really does pull us in all sorts of, all sorts of directions. So uh, that is essentially uh, the background to, to Myrtle's Rat. <laughs> now today being the 1st of September, 2022, um, we just got the news in yesterday that the Hayes Club case was dismissed. And uh, thankfully, there's been a lot of media attention. There's been a lot of public opinion. Everybody from the Daily Maverick to the Citizen to IOL uh, to various blogs, social media is alive with it. Uh, everybody is commenting. And for this, we are incredibly grateful because the slow pace of cannabis law reform in South Africa is something that has been incredibly frustrating for everybody. And here at Fields of Green for All, uh, we've been sort of plotting and planning now over winter. We, uh, of course, if you're watching this on the Hotbox show, this is the first show of um, of our new season. And if you're not watching it on the Hotbox show, uh, you can join us uh, live and unpredictable every Thursday night at 7 o'clock on YouTube and our other social media channels. So that's the end of that little punt. <laughs> um, so... We obviously uh, were, were quite taken aback by the judgment because we knew that it would come in in August. We weren't absolutely certain, but that's our, our experience of this. It came in on the 31st of August, and I particularly didn't call Neil yesterday. I thought, let's, um, let's give him a bit of a breather. And for those of you who don't know, uh, Neil Liddell is the um, uh, first plaintiff in the Hayes Club case, and this has been, uh, in his mind, dragging on since since 2020. And we had a little chat this morning, Neil and myself, and um, he really is a very, very brave young man, and he has really given everything. I know that his family have also made great sacrifices, and he believed right from the beginning. And it's not over. And as I explained to him, the case may have been dismissed, but you didn't lose. But all you've lost is time. And he certainly has lost some money, you know, uh, which he will most probably never recoup or only recoup in many years to come. But all is not lost, for sure, because there's a bigger picture here. There's a bigger picture. That is what is so difficult for us here at Fields of Green for All to get across to everybody. Because it seems like there's this little piecemeal pieces of legislative change maybe happening and the bill in parliament, excuse me while I spit three times when I say that, because 
you know, I'll get to that a bit later about the bill in Parliament. But we have the very, very brave Bernadette Enova in the Labour Court. Um, there's also another Labour Court issue that is going on in the Western Cape that I know I know Russ, our elder Gareth Prince, is helping the plaintiffs with there. And piecemeal, piecemeal. And at the same time, there's all these clubs bursting all over the place, even established cannabis clubs that have maybe been around for a year or two, which is a long time in this industry, are now starting to open up second branch and third branch. And we sit here in Fields of Green's office and we think, damn, you know, it's very good. We like to see this entrepreneurial spirit and we like to see uh, people giving a bit of the middle finger to the law, you know, that's also civil disobedience, that type of thing. Um, but there is very, very little awareness of this bigger picture. And I think that people need to sit up and pay attention. And that's why I want to thank Neil for, for what he's done, dismissal or no dismissal, because maybe now people will sit up and start paying, start paying attention to what the bigger issues are. And also, we must remember that it's five years since Jules and I were in the Pretoria High Court. And a lot can happen in five years. A whole new generation of people have turned 18. Uh, we always uh, laugh and joke amongst it that I'm a baby boomer, but then there's the Generation Zs and there's the Millennials and there's a, all of these uh, new generations coming up um, that we need to actually have a serious recap of where this all started. We could go back 700 years. We could go back 70 years to the 1961 Convention. We could go back seven years, but I think that one needs to go back 12 years because I've been out in bail for 12 years. And it took us from 2010, August the 5th, when we were arrested, until uh, the 31st of July, 2017, to land up in, in the Pretoria High Court. Uh, that was July, that March, we'd already got the Davis judgment, which was in the Western Cape. And that was Jeremy Acton and Russ Gareth Prince. Um, and they were obviously going to appeal and were on their way to the Constitutional Court. Their case overtook us by a fate of time and delays and the fact that the first time um, there weren't enough court days set down because they weren't really paying attention. So we had to reschedule that and that caused an 18-month delay. And during that 18-month delay, the Western Cape High Court where, uh, uh, went ahead of us. So we get to the Pretoria High Court and that is what we call the trial of the plant. Now every single day and every single minute of the footage um, for the trial of the plant is on our YouTube channel. But that trial has was rendered part heard because we sat there in the Pretoria High Court with our Dacha cushions because those benches are super hard. Um, we endured psychological warfare with the other side. Not so much a state, but Doctors for Life. Who are Doctors for Life? Doctors for Life joined the state as, as co-defendants because, remember, we weren't defending ourselves. The state were defending us themselves in the Pretoria High Court. Very important. Because in the beginning when we were arrested, we turned everything around and we said, no, 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 you put our case on hold and then we are going to sue the state so we are what is called the plaintiffs and they were the defendants so it was eight government departments uh, the department of trade and industry decided right in the beginning in 2011 that they were going to abide by the decision of the court so they weren't entering into the whole fight as it were and um and then so that left seven government departments and then Doctors for Life came in. Doctors for Life are a um, organization who, who uh, run kind of mission stations all around Africa and provide um, a medical service in rural areas. You can look them up, but you probably won't find them because they owe us a whole lot of money because between them and the state, they wasted nearly four days of our time with the trial. And when we only had 14 days, that cut the whole thing short. And what were we fighting about, ladies and gentlemen? The right to live stream the trial for all of South Africa and the world to see. 
It was so excruciating. The judge granted us the right and then they appealed. And then the judge granted us the right again and then they appealed. Then they went to the Supreme Court of Appeal. Then we had to take the whole live feed away from our website and we gave it to the SABC. But that live stream cost us you know, a couple of hundred thousand rand to put on. You know, we had special cameras, we had operators, we had all the tech equipment there in, in the court. And um, eventually, both the government and Doctors for Life lost at the Supreme Court of Appeal and uh, with costs. But unfortunately, um, it doesn't seem like the sheriff can find Doctors for Life. So if you know where they are, or maybe you know their advocate, uh, Advocate Reg Willis, uh, maybe we can find out where they are because they're around somewhere. They're for sure. They've still got a website. Go and look at their website and see how much they hate cannabis. It's quite a laugh that they can be so ignorant in 2022. So the trial of the plant then lasted it was 13 days, and we'll get through in my further rants, we'll, we'll go through various elements of our evidence that were heard. Um, and then we got to day 13, and it was halfway through Professor David Nutt's uh, testimony and cross-examination that, that the judge actually decided to, to just stop. So we had 13 days in court in all, 14 were set down, but that was a good time for it to stop. So it's been part heard since um, mid-August um, 2017 the trial of the plant. And that's just a bit of, of background. Um, why am I going into this whole thing about the trial of the plant? Well, you need to know about it if you're in any way uh, connected to the cannabis plant, particularly in South Africa. And the whole purpose of having this large umbrella campaign, which goes across all four platforms, and you can read about this in our blog and our website and social media posts, four platforms in a nutshell. Adult use, responsible adult use, if you want to call it. Umbrella platform, okay? This is very simple. Underneath that, cannabis for health. Not medicine, uh-uh, that's only a little bit of people, okay? Cannabis for health and well-being and everything that goes under that. Cannabis for industrial purposes. Hemp, if you want to call it that. We prefer not to. Cannabis for traditional, cultural, and religious use. Very simple to remember, what do people use cannabis for? There's four major platforms. We're going to be rolling out the campaign. Last Friday, we posted all about adult use, the umbrella of the campaign. And you'll be, you'll be able to see our opinions and all of our um, documents and comments over the years on each of the four platforms as we roll it up going to the anniversary of the Constitutional Court Judgment on, Septu on September 2018. It will be four years, ladies and gentlemen. Four years, ladies and gentlemen, and here's my dog. Her name's Mary Jane, and she's very, very sweet. She's very, very sweet, and she's interrupted my, my rant, and I hope she's not going to knock the camera over. I've seen these people on YouTube that have their dogs coming in. <laughs> and her name is Mary Jane, um, and she's my special needs child because she's deaf, but she has lots of other senses that make up for it. <laughs> right, back on track with the rant. I think that this thing of the evidence being heard, the trial of the plant being part heard, is one of the reasons why we're in the gray area. And as I started out with this rant, and we have all of these little piecemeal um, pieces of legislation and attempts at changing things and um, nothing concrete actually happening and nobody knowing what really, really what's going on. Well, when next time somebody says to you, oh, but isn't cannabis legal? You say to them, no, it isn't. Because the 1992 Drugs and Drug Trafficking Act is still firmly in place. That law has not changed. And what has also not changed is the fact that the cops, those ones that I rant about all the time, have not stopped arresting people. And we have 130 cases in the queue behind me in the Pretoria High Court. Because since 2013 and the establishment of Fields of Green for All, we've been fighting and fighting for the rights of the victims of the, of the South African Police Service. Uh, this is also a rant for another time. I can rant about the police between now and next year. 
But just as an introduction to Myrtle's rant, I thank you so much for watching and I'll be firing up and storing up in my gray matter because you know cannabis makes you creative. And people say it makes you forget, but no, it actually makes you remember the really, really important things. I didn't remember to put my phone on silent. So you've heard it going beep, beep during, during the rant. But I, I do remember what are the very, very important things to get across, particularly for those people who are new to the cannabis scene. So that actually is the end of my rant. And there might be a whole lot of things that we're really unhappy about. But one thing that we are really, really happy about is the support of our affiliates and our Green Network members at Fields of Green for All. It's been an incredibly difficult two years, and now we seem to be coming out um, of our shell, getting our mojo back. And what made us particularly, particularly happy this week was to receive one of numerous over the years beautiful boxes from the Garden Route. Yeah, so it's a beautiful box. So uh, this is from Mary Lou, Bruce and Josh. And they are from Cannabis Art and Southern Herbal Seeds. And they reside in Nisner on our amazing garden route. And from time to time, they send us these little gifts. And I'd like to open it and show you what they've sent us. And while I'm busy opening it, I uh, want to remind you that we really do rely on people like Southern Herbal Seeds and Cannabis Art to support us as affiliate companies. I'm sure that you would love to become part of our Fields of Green for All family because basically what it means to be a Green Network member at 49 Rand a month or an affiliate company, what that means is that you're being part of history. You're going to be written into the story. We're all making the movie and now we are really getting into the last, the last straight of this movie. We are going into the last stages of the shoot and one day we're going to be able to say it's a wrap and we will be able to distribute this movie uh, in all of its amazing parts all the way across the world. And this is a metaphorical movie because one day we're going to look back and we're going to say, wow, South Africa did show the way because we don't really think that anybody else has really got it right around the world. So let's have a quick look at what is in this beautiful box. So this is, I think, some seeds. So we'll save it for, for, for when we do a seed special and we'll look at the various cultivars. But this one's from Myrtle from Garden Root Genetics. Another one from Garden Root Genetics. And this one's for Robin. <laughs> Robin, our website developer, who really does, is ultimately who sets up the mechanics of being able to present to you all the evidence, all the information. So there's no excuse not to be up to date. And this one's for the hot box show. So here's some nice seeds, which we'll save for later. We we'll also have some, oh, look, a beautiful little ceramic morning bowl. You know, those old, that old-fashioned way of using the scissors to grind up your weed. Or you can use this little pen holder. Isn't that beautiful? Cannabis art. And here is some veggie seeds because we have our permaculture food garden here at the Jazz Farm because um, we always try to be uh, really healthy. I mean, I know I drink too much coffee and I smoke too much cigarettes, but we can try and counteract it by eating our greens. <laughs> too lovely. And then here is a little ceramic tile and it's a clock and it's always 4.20. <laughs> So I don't know if you can see that, but uh, if you've ever visited us here at the Jazz Farm, you know that we love, love, love our mosaic. Because to remind you again, cannabis makes you creative. And these dear friends of ours from the Garden Route are certainly very, very creative. We also have some stickers, cannabis art, come and visit so that you can come and get yours. We love stickers. There's also uh, some other... Uh, Southern Hemisphere seed stickers, and then here's a special little thing that's all wrapped up. And then Mary Lou did say to me in a WhatsApp message, she said that she sent some fossilized dabs. So look at this, it's a beautiful agate pendant, and it does look like fossilized dabs. <laughs> and that is wrapped up in a lovely drawing from Mary Lou and her granddaughter. So that's the good news. 
to end the rant, watch this space for the next edition of Myrtle's Rant, or maybe it will be Joe's rant, or Charles rant, or Amy's rant, or Robin's rant, or maybe it's your rant. If you'd like to know our opinion on something, you can put your your comments uh, below on our YouTube channel and we'll certainly get back to you. Anything bothering you, questions, be sure to uh, consult our FOQ on our website. Thanks for listening. Mm -hmm.